lesson, we will be dealing with the components of good writing. What are the things needed in order to have a well-written text? A piece of good writing must be composed of an interesting introduction, which presents the thesis statement and should capture the reader's attention. Now, what do we mean by a thesis statement? As defined by ECB.com, a thesis statement is a single sentence that ties together the main idea of any argument. It's a statement that summarizes your topic and declares your position on it. This sentence can tell a reader whether your text is something they want to read or not. Let's have an example. This is an informative thesis statement. To make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, you must procure the ingredients, find a knife, and spread the condiments. This thesis statement showed the reader the topic, a type of sandwich, and the direction the essay will take, describing how the sandwich is made. Another example, this time it is a persuasive thesis statement. A persuasive thesis usually contains an opinion and the reason why your opinion is true. Peanut butter and jelly sandwiches are the best type of sandwich because they are versatile, easy to make, and taste good. As you can see, the opinion is stated. The best type of sandwich, which means the writer have chosen a stance. Next, he or she explained that his or her opinion is correct with several key results. From this thesis statement, you may not be able to write your details about this. You may not explain why they are versatile, why it's easy to make, and why it tastes good. In the introduction, you may also use a surprising statement, provide a description, ask a question, relate an anecdote, and address the reader directly. Another component is paragraph. You must be able to have an effective paragraph. A paragraph is made up of sentences that work together to develop an idea or accomplish a purpose. A paragraph must be able to have unity and coherence. When we say unity, it is when all sentences support an explicit or implicit main idea. In other words, when the provided sentences exhibit the same thought about the main idea or is related to the main idea. Later on, I will give you an example. On the other hand, coherence is exhibited when each sentence follows logically to the next. When all of the ideas are organized and flow smoothly and logically from one to the next. Transitional devices will help you to achieve coherence. Now let's have examples. This was taken from ngl.singage.com. The title is Cleaning 101. Cleaning your room is not difficult if you follow some simple guidelines. First, you must pick up all of your clothes off the floor. Then you need to decide which clothes are dirty and which clothes are clean and put them in their appropriate places. It is important to wash your clothes with good quality laundry detergent to keep them looking neat and clean. After that, you should put away any items that are out of place. The next step is to dust all of your furniture, such as your nightstand or dresser. The final step is to mop or vacuum the floor, depending on its surface. Once you have finished the steps, you can relax as you can think about your good work. Does the first sentence maintain the unity of the paragraph? Of course, yes. The first sentence is the topic sentence. It lets the readers know that the paragraph will give the steps necessary to clean their room. Now, how about this one? Does the second sentence maintain the, uni the unity of the paragraph? Yes, it gives the first step to cleaning your room. Does the third sentence maintain the unity of the paragraph? Yes. 
It provides information describing what to do with the clothes. It provides extra information about the second sentence. Does the fourth sentence maintain the unity of the paragraph? Okay, that's no. It tells the reader about the importance of doing laundry with a specific type of laundry detergent. As you can see, this sentence 4 does not support the purpose of the paragraph. It should not be included. So this doesn't show unity. It is not related to the main topic. And in the remaining sentences, numbers 5 to 8, you can see that they followed unity. They are related or support the main idea. They explain or elaborated the main idea. And of course, this passageway text also follows coherence because each sentence follows logically to the next to the use of transitional devices such as first, after that, final, and so on. Next example, Rhea offered to help her mother clean the house. She vacuumed the living room and dusted the furniture. She picked up the toys in the playroom. She ate a ham sandwich for lunch. Then she mopped the kitchen floor. Can you identify which of the supporting details focus? Which of the supporting details does not follow or exhibit unity? Okay, very good. The sentence she ate a ham sandwich for lunch doesn't show unity because it is not related to the main idea which is Rhea offered to help her mother clean the house. Eating a ham sandwich has nothing to do with cleaning the house. Another component of good writing is the smooth transition. These are words, phrases, or sentences that show connections between details. These are used to connect sentences smoothly and paragraphs so that there would be no abrupt breaks between them. Some examples of transitional devices are here, for emphasis we have undoubtedly, unquestionably, we have part obviously, particularly, in particular, especially, clearly, importantly, absolutely, definitely, without a doubt, indeed, it should be noted, and if you want a transitional devices that uh, shows or adding some thoughts, you can use this one along with, apart from this, moreover, furthermore, also to as well as that, besides, in addition, not only but also, in addition to that, additionally or an additional. And if you want to establish a contrast or a contradictory, you may use this. And like, nevertheless, on the other hand, nonetheless, despite, in spite of, in contrast, contrary to, whereas, alternatively, conversely, even so, different from. And if you want to showcase an order, you may use this following at this time, previously, first or firstly, second or secondly, third or thirdly, finally, Subsequently, above all, before, last but not least, first and foremost. Next, we have the conclusion. You must be able to write a satisfying conclusion. You must be able to sum up the ideas presented in a text. Restate the main ideas or thesis in different words. You can also ask questions as a response to your readers or ask their opinion to your presented information. You can also solve recommendations, share your opinions, etc. Another component of good writing is elaboration. It is the process of providing specific, relevant, and appropriate supporting details to the main idea. Uh, a piece will not be effective if it will not elaborate the topic. Elaboration must be done in the body of your text. We also have here the writing traits. Good writing has specific qualities or traits. 
and one of those is focus and coherence. You can tell if the text is focused and coherent if it gives to the topic, meaning to say it doesn't discuss any other details that has nothing to do with the main topic. Coherent if the text is clear and supported by well-chosen details. The ideas are well connected to each other through the use of transitional devices. Next is organization. Your text must be written in an organized manner in which the ideas move from sentence to sentence in a logical way and from paragraph to paragraph. Another writing trait is the development of ideas. A good text must be clearly defined, logically developed, supported by appropriate details, and connected in an interesting manner. A writer must be able to identify the writer's styles in writing through the diction used by the writer. Next is the conventions. Conventions refer to correct use of all spelling, punctuation, capitalization, grammar, usage, and sentence structure rules. If your texts have this writing tree, surely you'll be able to write a well-written text that your readers may enjoy. So that's the end of our discussion for today. I hope you've learned something. Thank you.